Welcome to In the Word with Roy Edwards, where we dive into the timeless wisdom of the scriptures with your host, Pastor Roy Edwards. He is the senior pastor of Redemption Church in Casa Grande. Service times are Sundays at 9 and 11 a.m. and Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. For more information, check out www.redemptioncg.org. Prepare to be uplifted, encouraged, and challenged by the Word of God. Let's jump right into the message. Thank you for joining me today on this podcast. We just finished up 30 days of prayer here in our church at Redemption Church in Casa Grande. And uh, we've already we've already completed our 30 days, but I decided let's do a bonus. Let's do a bonus episode, a bonus podcast, and just give you just a little bit more teaching on prayer. So let's jump right in. Psalm chapter 1, verse 1 through 6 says it like this. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So so let's jump into it. The, The passage that we read is all about the power of meditating on God's word and living a life that's rooted in prayer and righteousness. And so if you've ever felt a need to get grounded in your faith, or if you're looking to strengthen your relationship with God, then Psalms chapter 1 is really a great place to start. Let's talk about delighting in God's Word. Psalm 1 opens with a powerful statement. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. The right way. We're shown this contrast between the two paths in life. The psalmist describes the blessed person as someone who avoids the influence of the ungodly, the sinners and the scornful. But what makes this person really blessed? We see it in verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Listen to me. This is the key. Meditating on God's word. To delight in the law of the Lord means to find joy satisfaction and fulfillment in God's word. This isn't about obligation or legalism. No, it's about the loving word of it's about loving the word of God. It's about so much more than just a duty, an obligation. It's out of devotion. And it should become a constant part of our lives. The blessed person doesn't just read scripture occasionally. No, they meditate on it day and night. And when we talk about meta meditation in this biblical sense, it means to reflect deeply. It means to chew on the word of God. It the 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 cool word here in the Hebrew for meditate actually means to ruminate. And where we understand ruminate or ruminate or ruminate from is from a a a cow, for instance. A cow has four chambers in its stomach. And so it will eat all morning and all day, all afternoon. It will eat and eat and eat all kinds of grass and hay. And then in the evening time, they will lay down and they, what we call, chew their cud. And they will sit there and they'll regurgitate it out of their first stomach into their mouth. They'll chew on it. They'll chew on it and then they'll swallow it back down. And then they'll chew on it some more and swallow it back down and then bring it back up. And and so they're regurgitating it back and forth because what they're doing is they're is they're expressing all of the nutrients possible. If they were to just, like you and I, if they were just to to eat something, chew it and swallow it and digest it, they wouldn't be able to get the proper nutrients from that grass. So God in his wisdom and God in his uh, amazing way of how he did creation, he gives them a four-chambered stomach 
So they eat the grass. They put the grass in their stomach. They bring it up out of their stomach. They chew on it some more and then swallow it back down. And they do this several times until they begin to fully digest this food. And so they ruminate on it. And this is how the word picture for us should be, that we should chew on the word of God and digest it and let it get down on the inside of us and then bring it back up and chew on it some more and then bring it back down and 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 then bring it back up and chew on it some more and 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 back and forth and back and forth to meditate on God's word, to ruminate, ruminate on God's word day and night. We need to digest it. We need to get it inside, and then we need to bring it up so we can fully grasp the nutrients that he's trying to give us. Come on, somebody. And so it's not a hurried feasting that these cows do. No, and it shouldn't be a hurried feasting that we do or the reading of just a quick verse or a quick devotion. No, it's about allowing God's word to sink down deep into our hearts and change the way that we think and change the way that we live. Let me ask you a question. How often do you slow down to truly meditate on Scripture? Because in our fast-paced world, it's so easy to just read a verse and quickly move on with our day. But Psalms 1 reminds us that the person who is blessed is the one who takes time to focus on God's Word continually. Getting it down, bringing it up, getting it down bringing it up, letting it guide every aspect of our life. Listen, meditating on God's word is rooting your life in God. Let's move to verse three, which gives us a really great picture of what happens when we meditate on God's word. He says it like this. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does, it shall prosper. This tree planted by streams of water is one of stability. It's one that gets, it's a tree that gets nourished and it's fruitful. A tree that is rooted near water has a constant source of life. It does not struggle to survive or to rely on unpredictable circumstances like rain. No, it's constantly connected to the source. And when we get in God's word, we become like that tree. We are rooted in the truth. Listen to me. We are rooted in the truth of God's word, and we're drawing life from it and strength from his word. Listen, this doesn't mean that we won't face challenges or seasons of difficulty, but it does mean that we'll have a firm foundation and we will bear fruit in the proper time. I love what it says, and whatever he does shall prosper. This isn't about worldly success. It's about living in alignment with God's will. And when we're rooted in God's word, everything we do flows from a place of obedience and trust in our God. We prosper because we're walking in God's ways, not the ways of the world. Contrast here, he says the ungodly are like chaff. Psalms 1 doesn't stop with the blessings of meditating on God's word. The psalmist contrasts the life of the righteous with that of the ungodly. In verse 4, he says it like this. The ungodly are not so, but they are like chaff, which the wind drives away. you got to understand this word picture here. The chaff is, is the dry, worthless part of a grain that's separated and blown away by the wind. It has no stability. It has no substance, and it has no lasting value. The ungodly? Those who reject God's word and live according to their own desires and their own flesh, they're like that chaff. Their lives are ultimately unstable, blown about by every change in circumstance or trend. And when we choose not to meditate on God's word, instead of following the counsel of the ungodly, instead we follow the counsel of the ungodly or the path of the sinners, we lack the rootedness that comes in living in alignment with God's will. Next piece, God knows the way of the righteous. Psalm 1 closes with a powerful reassurance in verse 6. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Listen, this should be a reminder to us that God is not distant or detached from our lives. No, it's quite the opposite. He knows the way of the righteous, and he's intimately involved in guiding us, protecting us, and providing for us. And he knows those who seek him and those who are living according to his word. 
To be known by God is to be under his care, his guidance, and his protection. But those who reject God live in opposition to his word. Their way leads to destruction. And this should be sobering to us. It should be a sobering reminder that the choices we make, they have lasting and eternal consequences. Prayer and meditation go hand in hand. Let's talk about how prayer connects with meditating on God's word. Meditating on scripture leads us to a deeper prayer life, and in turn, prayer helps us better understand and apply God's word. When we pray, we communicate with God. When we meditate, we allow his word to communicate to us. So consider this. In prayer, we pour our hearts out to God. We seek his face. We seek his guidance. We seek his comfort, and we seek his wisdom. In meditation, we allow his word to fill our hearts directing our thoughts and shaping us, learning how to understand his will. Psalm 1 challenges us to make this a daily practice. Meditate on God's word day and night. And the more we do this, the more we become rooted in him, like that tree by the rivers of water. And as we meditate on scripture, our prayers become deeper. They become more aligned with God's heart and more transformative in our lives. So here's some Here's some practical ways to meditate on God's word. I know we get busy, but we've got to, listen to me, we've got to carve out some time to meditate on God's word. Let me encourage you. Number one, start small. Begin by taking a single verse or a passage and focusing on it throughout the day. You don't need to read a large portion of scripture. Sometimes just one verse is enough to meditate on it and reflect on it. Number two, memorize scripture. When you memorize a verse, it becomes a part of you. You can meditate on it any time, whether you're driving at work, doing, a, doing chores at home. Let the word of God be in your mind and heart continually. Number three, journal. Write down your reflections on scripture, and it can help you process what God is speaking to you. Take time to journal after reading and asking yourself how the passage applies to your life. Pray through scripture. Pray through scripture. As you meditate on a passage, turn it into a prayer. Ask God to reveal its deeper meaning to you and pray for the ability to live it out in your daily life. So practical steps on meditating on God's word. Start small, number one. Number two, memorize scripture. Number three, journal your thoughts. And number four, pray through scripture. Listen, Psalms 1 reminds us that the blessed life is one rooted in God's word. And when we meditate on his word and live in alignment with it, we are like a tree planted by streams of water. Strong, fruitful, and prosperous in everything that we do. Prayer and meditation are the keys to this life's blessings. So my challenge to you today is take some time to meditate on God's word. Make it a habit every single day. Let scripture be the foundation for your prayer and, and the guide for your decisions. And as you do, oh my God, you're going to experience peace and stability and fruitfulness that comes from living a life grounded in God. Father, I love you today and I thank you for who you are and for what you're doing. And I thank you, Lord, that we are going to be Psalm 1 type people. We are going to delight in your word. We are going to meditate, God, day and night. And Lord, we thank you for the promise that as we delight in, the, in, the, in your law, in your ways, in your word, and we meditate on it, we chew on it and get it down and bring it back up and chew on it some more. Lord, we're going to be like a tree planted by rivers of water that brings forth fruit in its season, whose leaf will not fail. And Lord, whatever we do is going to prosper because we're putting you first. We're praying, we're meditating, we're feasting God on your word. God, I pray that in the name of Jesus, you will help us. You will guide us. And Lord, I pray that in the name of Jesus, we would fall in love with your word and fall in love with praying and seeking your face. I love you, I bless you, and I thank you, God, for what you're doing. In Jesus' holy name, I pray. Amen. Listen, until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May his love surround you, his spirit guide you, and his grace cover you 
today and always in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for listening today to In the Word with Roy Edwards. We pray you've been encouraged and challenged by the Word today. Be sure to follow Pastor Edwards on social media, YouTube, and you can also listen to these messages on any podcast platform you consume content. Just search for In the Word with Roy Edwards and enjoy. We will be back next week with more messages to encourage you in the Word.